wildlife photographer by the name of John Luton got entrapped in an illegal big game type of shoot. This Luton shows sheep hunters big rams for free, and then he films the hunts as a business, you see. Now these rams John is finding are bigger by far than most outfitters find, though they search near and far. For these pros to be beaten at their own hunting game causes lots of red faces and considerable shame. So these Montana guides made a desperate plea to fish, wildlife, and parks based on pure jealousy. They had to stop looting from spending these time showing big rams to hunters for not one thin dime. So they cooked up a scheme to get looting arrested, and they brought in an agent, a case soon contested. They gave Warden Gibson a very rare tag, and he went undercover a bighorn to bag. Then he asked John Luton if he'd kindly go and show him the place where the big big horns grow. John kindly obliged with the camera and crew and headed off to the brakes to see what they could do. In the course of the hunt, Gibson's illegal plans like radios and aircraft and cross enclosed lands were shunned by John Luton, the bait he'd not take, so Gibson got desperate. Too much was at stake. Though wired to capture an illicit conversation, Gibson naturally drifted toward exasperation, cause all of the talk from old John and his crew was all on the level. So now what to do? Well, money was offered, but old John wouldn't take it. With no evidence of crime, Gibson knew he must fake it. He came up with plan B on the spot, I might add, then waited to try it. That's when things went bad. Now you see this John Luton is a true bighorn scholar. Before long he'd found one way back in a holler, an enormous old ram like few folks know exists. So Gibson cuts loose and by golly he missed. He then begs John Luton to shoot this big ram, but that'd be illegal, the first sign of a scam. Now Luton's a sportsman, fair chase all the way. He refuses the offer, there just ain't no way. Gibson knew the case had never hold water, so with a ram in his sights, he figured he ought to just plug the old boy and then offer to sell it to Luton for cash and perhaps that would nail it. So with a yank of the trigger, he made the lead fly and two shots out of nine made nice holes in the sky. Through the foot, through a horn, and two rounds in the guts and placing his shot, the man was a klutz. But he's a lawman, you see, and by rights he can shoot. And no doubt he can juggle and walk on water to boot. I guess Luton's calm finally settled him down, for when the smoke finally cleared, he'd cut the ram down. With the ram on the ground, the offer was made, but John said this sale won't be made in the shade. So when the ram's horns were plugged and the sale was legal, John purchased the ram head, as would I or most people. Plugged head is legal to purchase or sell. This would trip old Gibson up, but he thought, what the hell? This sting operation hadn't come off as planned, and too much was invested to just quit this scam. So the state charged ahead and had John locked up tight and 
concocted a case in the dark of the night. They tampered with witnesses, lied and changed maps, then denied it in court, but their story had gas. The funny thing was that they seemed to forget John had the whole episode on film as a set. Testimony and video didn't match up, and the jury could see that the state had screwed up. So the case fell to pieces when it all went to trial. With egg on their faces, the state seemed in denial. They'd been caught in bed with a big special interest, which horrified the public appalled at such incest. If you're like me, you're comforted so much to know that your tax money's now found a good place to go. We need our game wardens out killing wildlife to protect them from cameras and us and the like. Fish, wildlife, and parks stole a bighorn permit from the hunters who thought that the draw was legit. The state kept their money with no intent to deliver. It was used in a scam and is now gone forever. And as we've come to know and expect now, I guess John was tried and convicted and hung by the press. Though cleared and acquitted of every bad act, not one word was printed reporting that fact. The losers in all this are plain folks like us, presumed guilty by agencies who supposedly protect us. Old John was acquitted, his name in the clear, but his case shows a threat to the things we hold dear. Arrogance, deceit, and the abuses of power are too much the case in this country of ours. When the government thinks that they're too big to fail, then the lid's on the coffin and they drive the first nail. Mm -hmm.